Hello, and a very warm welcome to Fireside Fables. If you're seeking stories that weave tranquility into your night, guiding you gently towards a restful slumber, you found the right place. Here, we embark on journeys not just to distant lands and times, but into the heart of peace and calm itself. So, make yourself comfortable. Let the day's worries melt away and join me by the fireside. Together, we'll explore tales designed to soothe your mind, ease your soul, and escort you into the most peaceful sleep. Tonight, let the flickering flames and the soft cadence of our stories be your sanctuary. In the heart of the Scottish Highlands, where ancient mountains stand as silent sentinels and whispers of old legends dance on the wind, lies the tranquil valley of Glencoe. As our story begins, the first light of dawn breaks over the eastern peaks, casting a soft golden glow across the misty landscape. The glen stretches out like a verdant carpet, its lush grass swaying gently in the morning breeze. Droplets of dew cling to each blade, sparkling like tiny diamonds in the early sunlight. The air is crisp and clean, carrying with it the sweet scent of heather and the earthy aroma of damp soil. A gentle river meanders through the valley, its clear waters bubbling and gurgling over smooth, rounded stones. The sound of the flowing water creates a soothing melody, a natural lullaby that seems to whisper, slow down, breathe deep, and find peace in this moment. As the mist begins to lift, it reveals pockets of vibrant wildflowers dotting the landscape. Bluebells nod their delicate heads, while hardy thistles stand proud, their purple blooms a testament to the resilience of life in this remote haven. Here and there, clusters of white snowdrops peek out from beneath the shadows of ancient, gnarled trees. Their presence a reminder of the eternal cycle of seasons in this timeless place. The surrounding mountains cradle the glen in their protective embrace. Their slopes are a patchwork of deep greens and rich browns, with exposed rock faces adding streaks of gray to nature's canvas. Wisps of mist cling to the mountain tops slowly dissipating as the sun climbs higher in the sky, revealing the majestic beauty of the rugged peaks. In the distance, a herd of red deer grazes peacefully, their presence barely disturbing the tranquility of the morning. A stag lifts his noble head, his antlers silhouetted against the brightening sky before returning to his leisurely breakfast. As the morning progresses, the glen comes alive with the gentle sounds of nature. The melodious songs of skylarks and meadow pipits fill the air, their cheerful tunes a celebration of life in this secluded paradise. A gentle breeze rustles through the leaves of the scattered rowan and birch trees, adding its whisper to nature's symphony. Nestled among a cluster of ancient trees, almost hidden from view, stands a small cozy cottage. Its stone walls are weathered by countless seasons, and a thatched roof sits atop like a snug cap. Tendrils of ivy climb the walls, their leaves a vibrant green against the gray stone. A thin wisp of smoke rises from the chimney curling lazily into the air and hinting at the warmth and comfort within. Around the cottage, a well-tended garden thrives, filled with a variety of plants, both familiar and mysterious. The garden seems to radiate a sense of peace and purpose, 
as if each plant has been carefully chosen and lovingly nurtured for its specific gifts. As the mist finally clears and the sun bathes the entire glen in its warm light, the cottage stands as a beacon of tranquility in this already peaceful valley. It beckons to weary travelers, promising rest, healing, and perhaps a touch of the magic that seems to permeate the very air of Glencoe. And so, our story begins in this mist-covered valley where the wisdom of the ages and the healing power of nature converge in the humble abode of the wise woman of Glencoe. As we stand at the threshold of her world, we can almost feel the gentle embrace of the glen, inviting us to leave our troubles behind and step into a realm of peace, wisdom, and ancient Scottish magic. As the morning sun climbs higher in the sky, casting its warm light across the tranquil glen, we turn our attention to the cozy cottage nestled among the ancient trees. This is the home of Morag, the wise woman of Glencoe, whose gentle presence has been a source of comfort and healing for countless souls over the years. The cottage door opens with a soft creak, and Morag steps out into the golden morning light. She is a woman of advanced years, her face etched with the lines of a life well lived each wrinkle a testament to wisdom gained and kindness shared. Her silver hair, long and slightly wavy, is gathered in a loose braid that falls over one shoulder, adorned with sprigs of lavender and rosemary. Morag's eyes, a deep and soothing shade of blue, seem to hold within them the very essence of the glen itself calm, wise, and infinitely patient as she gazes out over her beloved valley. A gentle smile plays on her lips, radiating warmth and welcome to all who might cross her path. She moves with a quiet grace, her steps sure and unhurried as she makes her way to the garden. Morag's clothing is simple yet practical a long skirt of soft, earthy brown paired with a cream-colored blouse. Over this, she wears a shawl of deep green, its intricate pattern reminiscent of the intertwining herbs in her garden. As she walks, the faint scent of herbs and flowers seems to follow her, a soothing aromatherapy that brings peace to those around her. Morag's day begins, as it always does, with tending to her beloved garden. She kneels beside a patch of chamomile, her hands gently caressing the delicate white petals. Her touch is tender, almost reverential, as she checks each plant for signs of need or distress. To Morag, these are not mere plants, but dear friends and trusted allies in her healing work. As she moves through the garden, Morag hums softly to herself, an old Gaelic melody passed down through generations. The sound blends seamlessly with the gentle buzzing of bees and the soft rustle of leaves, creating a peaceful symphony that seems to make the plants themselves stand a little taller. After ensuring the well-being of her garden, Morag returns to her cottage to begin preparing her herbal remedies. The interior of her home is as warm and inviting as Morag herself. Bunches of dried herbs hang from the rafters, filling the air with a complex tapestry of soothing scents. Shelves lined with jars of various sizes contain her prepared remedies each carefully labeled in Morag's flowing script. At a sturdy wooden table, 
worn smooth by years of use, Morag begins her work. Her movements are deliberate and focused as she measures, grinds, and mixes her herbs. There is a rhythm to her work, a dance of sorts born from years of practice and deep understanding of her craft. As she works, she infuses each remedy, not just with the healing properties of the herbs, but with her own energy of compassion and care. Throughout the day, Morag moves between her garden and her workroom, always attuned to the rhythms of nature around her. She pauses often to listen to the wind in the trees, the song of a bird, the distant rush of the river. In these moments of quiet contemplation, Morag seems to gather wisdom from the very air around her, adding to the deep well of knowledge she has accumulated over her long life. As evening approaches, Morag settles into a comfortable chair by the hearth, a steaming cup of herbal tea in her hands. The warm glow of the fire illuminates her face, highlighting the contentment and peace that reside there. She sits in quiet reflection, grateful for another day spent in harmony with the natural world and in service to those who seek her aid. In these tranquil moments, as the day gently fades into night, Morag embodies the very essence of the wise woman, a beacon of calm, a source of healing, and a living connection to the ancient wisdom of the glen. Her presence in this remote valley is a reminder of the power of living in tune with nature and of the profound healing that can come from a life lived with purpose, compassion, and deep respect for the natural world. As the gentle light of a new day bathes Glencoe in its warm embrace, we turn our attention to the heart of Morag's world, her healing garden, this sacred space nestled beside her cozy cottage, is a testament to the wise woman's deep connection with nature and her commitment to the art of healing. The garden is a tapestry of colors, textures, and scents. Each plant, carefully chosen and lovingly tended by Morag's skilled hands, as we step into this verdant sanctuary, the outside world seems to fade away, replaced by a sense of timeless tranquility. Neat paths of smooth river stones wind their way through the garden, inviting exploration and contemplation. Along these paths, raised beds burst with a variety of healing herbs, their leaves dancing gently in the soft highland breeze. Near the entrance, a patch of bright green mint releases its invigorating scent as we brush past. Morag often uses this refreshing herb in teas to aid digestion and clear the mind. Beside it, the delicate purple flowers of lavender nod gracefully, their soothing fragrance a natural remedy for restlessness and anxiety. Further along, we encounter a bed of chamomile, its daisy-like flowers reaching towards the sun. Morag harvests these gentle blossoms to create a calming tea that eases tension and promotes restful sleep. Nearby, the spiky leaves of rosemary stand tall, their pine-like aroma sharpening focus and enhancing memory. In a sunny corner, St. John's wort blooms with cheerful yellow flowers. Morag carefully harvests this plant to create remedies that lift the spirits and chase away the gloom of long winter days. Beside it, the fuzzy leaves of sage offer their earthy scent, a plant Morag uses to soothe sore throats 
and clear the air of negative energies. A small pond occupies the center of the garden, its still surface reflecting the sky above. Water lilies float serenely on the surface, while beneath, goldfish dart among the stems of aquatic plants. The gentle sound of water, trickling from a small stone fountain, fills the air, its rhythm a soothing balm for troubled minds. Near the pond, a majestic rowan tree spreads its protective branches. In Scottish folklore, the rowan is known for its power to ward off evil and enhance psychic abilities. Morag often sits beneath its canopy, finding inspiration and connection to the ancient wisdom of the land. As we continue our journey through the garden, we encounter many more healing plants. The bright yellow flowers of calendula, used in salves for skin healing. The tall stalks of echinacea, boosting immunity with their purple blooms. And the feathery leaves of yarrow, a versatile herb used in many of Morag's remedies. Each plant in this garden has a purpose, a story, and a deep connection to Morag's healing practice. As she tends to her green allies, Morag doesn't simply garden. She communes with nature, listening to the whispered wisdom of each leaf and petal. Throughout the day, Morag can be found here, her hands in the soil, her heart open to the teachings of the plant world. She harvests with care and intention, always thanking the plants for their gifts and ensuring sustainable growth for future needs. As the day progresses, the garden becomes a haven for local wildlife. Bees buzz lazily from flower to flower, their gentle hum a soothing symphony. Butterflies dance on the air, their delicate wings adding flashes of color to the already vibrant scene. Birds sing from the nearby trees, their melodies a joyful accompaniment to the peaceful atmosphere. As evening approaches, the garden takes on a magical quality. The setting sun paints the sky in hues of pink and gold, casting long shadows across the paths. Fireflies emerge, their soft lights twinkling among the plants like earthbound stars. In these quiet twilight moments, Morag often walks the paths of her garden, reflecting on the day and giving thanks for the abundance that surrounds her. The healing garden, in all its beauty and vitality, stands as a living symbol of Morag's wisdom and her deep abiding connection to the natural world. Here, in this sacred space, the true magic of Glencoe reveals itself not in grand gestures or mysterious incantations, but in the quiet, constant growth of green things, the cycle of seasons, and the ancient, unbroken bond between humans and the healing power of nature As the sun begins its descent behind the majestic peaks of Glencoe, casting long shadows across the tranquil valley, a figure appears on the winding path that leads to Morag's cottage. This is Aileen, a young woman from the busy streets of Edinburgh, her steps heavy with the weariness of a long journey and a heart burdened by the fast-paced demands of city life. Eileen's face, though youthful, bears the signs of stress and fatigue. Her brow is furrowed with worry, and dark circles shadow her eyes, hinting at many restless nights. Her shoulders are slightly hunched, as if carrying an invisible weight. As she makes her way along the path, her gaze is drawn to the beauty around her, and for brief moments, 
the tension in her features softens. The scent of herbs and flowers grows stronger as Aileen approaches Morag's cottage. She pauses at the gate to the garden, taking in the peaceful scene before her. The cottage, with its weathered stone walls and thatched roof, seems to beckon her forward, promising comfort and respite. As if sensing the arrival of a soul in need, Morag emerges from her cottage. Her wise eyes take in Aileen's weary state, and a gentle smile of understanding and welcome lights up her face. Without a word, she gestures for Aileen to enter, the simple movement filled with warmth and acceptance. Aileen steps into the cottage, and immediately, a sense of calm begins to wash over her. The interior is cozy and inviting, filled with the soothing scents of dried herbs and wood smoke from the small hearth. Soft light filters through windows, draped with sheer curtains, casting a warm glow over the room. Mora guides Eileen to a comfortable chair near the fireplace, its cushions soft and inviting. As Aileen sinks into the seat, she feels some of the tension begin to leave her body. Morag busies herself at a small stove, her movements quiet and purposeful as she prepares a pot of herbal tea. No words are exchanged yet, but the silence is not uncomfortable. It's a healing silence, allowing Eileen's racing thoughts to slowly settle like leaves gently floating to the surface of a still pond. The only sounds are the soft clinks cups and the gentle bubbling of water heating for tea. Soon, Morag returns with two steaming cups. The fragrance that rises from them is complex yet soothing, a blend of chamomile for calm, lavender for relaxation, and a hint of mint for refreshment. She hands one cup to Eileen, their fingers brushing in a moment of gentle human connection. Eileen cups the warm mug in both hands, allowing its heat to seep into her palms. She closes her eyes and inhales deeply the aromatic steam, seeming to melt away some of the stress she's been carrying. When she opens her eyes, she finds Morag watching her with a kind, patient gaze. Welcome to Glencoe, dear one, Morag says, her voice as soothing as the tea. She's prepared. You've traveled far, both in distance and in spirit. Rest now and let the peace of this place begin to heal you. Eileen takes a sip of the tea, its warmth spreading through her body bringing with it a sense of comfort she hasn't felt in a long time. As she drinks, Morag speaks softly, her words flowing as gently as the nearby stream. She tells Aileen about the glen, its history, and the healing properties of the herbs in her garden. The sound of Morag's voice, the warmth of the fire, and the soothing effects of the tea all work together to create a cocoon of tranquility around Aileen. For the first time in months, she feels the knot of anxiety in her chest begin to loosen, her breathing deepens, and her eyelids grow heavy with a healing tiredness, not the exhaustion she's grown accustomed to. As the evening deepens into night, Eileen finds herself enveloped in the profound peace of Glencoe. The worries and stresses of her city life seem distant now, unable to touch her in this sanctuary of calm. And Morag's gentle presence and the soothing atmosphere of the cottage, Aileen has found a respite, a chance to breathe, to heal, and to rediscover the quiet strength within herself. And so, 
as the stars begin to twinkle in the velvet sky above Glencoe. Eileen settles into the soft bed Morag has prepared for her, the scent of lavender from a small sachet beneath her pillow fills her senses and the distant sound of the Glen's nighttime symphony lulls her into a deep, restful sleep. The first she's had in longer than she can remember in the gentle embrace of Glen Co and under the watchful care of its wise woman, Eileen's journey of healing's journey of healing and self-discovery has only just begun. The soft light of dawn filters through the cottage windows, gently rousing Eileen from the deepest, most restful sleep she's experienced in years. As she slowly opens her eyes, the events of the previous evening come back to her. The arrival at the cottage, Morag's warm welcome, and the soothing cup of herbal tea that seemed to melt away her stress. Eileen sits up in bed, noticing with surprise that the tension in her shoulders, a constant companion for so long, has significantly diminished. The air in the room is fresh and sweet, carrying the mingled scents of herbs from Morag's garden for the first time in months. Aileen feels a sense of calm anticipation for the day ahead. As she makes her way to the cottage's main room, Aileen finds Morag already awake, tending to a small fire in the hearth. The wise woman turns, greeting Aileen with a warm smile that crinkles the corners of her eyes. Good morning, dear one, Morag says softly. I trust you slept well. The Glen has a way of providing deep rest to those who need it most. Eileen nods, returning the smile. I can't remember the last time I slept so peacefully, she admits. Thank you for your hospitality, Morag. Morag gestures for Eileen to join her at the small wooden table near the window. The surface is adorned with a simple breakfast of oatmeal, fresh berries, and steaming mugs of herbal tea. As they begin to eat, Morag gently encourages Aileen to share what brought her to Glencoe. Slowly, hesitantly at first, Aileen begins to speak. She tells Morag about her life in Edinburgh, the demanding job, the constant pressure to perform, the sleepless nights spent worrying about deadlines and expectations. As she speaks, Aileen realizes just how much she's been carrying and how desperately she needed this respite. Morag listens attentively, her blue eyes filled with understanding and compassion. When Aileen finishes, the wise woman reaches across the table, gently patting Aileen's hand You've carried a heavy burden, child, Morag says softly. But remember, even the strongest oak must bend with the wind, or it will break. There is no shame in seeking balance and rest. As the morning progresses, Morag begins to share her wisdom with Aileen. They walk together in the garden, the wise woman pointing out various herbs and explaining their properties, Morag speaks of the importance of connecting with nature, of finding moments of stillness in a chaotic world. Each plant in this garden has its purpose, Morag explains, running her fingers gently over the leaves of a rosemary bush, just as each of us has our own unique gifts to offer the world. But even the most useful herb can wither if it's not properly cared for. The same is true for people, dear Aileen. They pause by the small pond in the center of the garden. Morag encourages Aileen to close her eyes and simply listen to the sounds around her. 
the gentle trickle of the fountain, the soft rustle of leaves in the breeze, the melodious songs of nearby birds. This is the art of being present, Morag says softly. So often we let our minds dwell in the past or race towards the future, forgetting the simple beauty of the present moment. True healing begins when we learn to be fully present in our lives. Throughout the day, Mora continues to share her gentle wisdom. She teaches Aileen about the healing properties of various herbs, showing her how to brew simple teas and prepare soothing balms. But more than that, she imparts lessons on the importance of self-care, of setting boundaries, and of honoring one's own needs. As the sun begins its descent, painting the sky in hues of pink and gold, Morag and Aileen sit together on a bench overlooking the glen. The valley stretches out before them, a vista of serene beauty that seems to soothe the soul just by existing. Remember, Aileen, Morag says, her voice blending with the evening breeze. True strength isn't about constantly pushing yourself to the limit. It's about knowing when to rest, when to ask for help, and when to simply be still and listen to the wisdom of your own heart. Eileen nods, feeling a sense of peace settle over her. The wisdom Morag has shared throughout the day resonates deeply within her, like seeds being planted in fertile soil. She knows that cultivating these lessons will take time and practice, but for the first time in a long while, she feels hopeful about the future. As twilight deepens into night, Eileen retires to her room, her mind calm and her heart full. The day spent in Morag's company has been a gentle revelation, opening her eyes to a new way of living. In the quiet of her room, as the soothing sounds of the Glen's nighttime symphony drift through the window, Eileen reflects on the wisdom she's gained. She falls asleep with a sense of gratitude, knowing that her journey with the wise woman of Glencoe is only beginning, and that each new day holds the promise of further healing and discovery. The next morning dawns clear and bright, the sun casting a golden glow across the misty glen. Aileen wakes, feeling refreshed, the peacefulness of her surroundings seeping into her very being. As she joins Morag for a simple breakfast of porridge sweetened with local honey, the wise woman suggests they spend the day exploring the art of listening. In our busy world, Morag begins, her voice as soothing as the herbal tea they sip. We often forget how to truly listen, not just to others, but to ourselves and to the world around us. Today, we'll practice opening our ears and our hearts to the wisdom that surrounds us. After breakfast, Morag leads Aileen out of the cottage and into the heart of Glencoe. They walk in comfortable silence, their footsteps soft on the dewy grass. The morning air is crisp and invigorating, filling their lungs with the pure essence of the highlands. As they reach a small clearing beside a babbling brook, Morag gestures for Aileen to sit on a smooth, sun-warmed rock. The wise woman settles beside her, her weathered hands resting gently in her lap. Close your eyes, dear one, Morag instructs softly, and simply listen. Don't try to identify or name what you hear. Just let the sounds wash over you. Eileen obeys, closing her eyes and focusing on her sense of hearing. 
At first, all she notices is the obvious, the burbling of the nearby stream, the rustle of leaves in the breeze, but as she continues to listen, more subtle sounds emerge. The distant call of a bird she doesn't recognize, the soft buzz of insects, the whisper of grass bending in the wind. Our minds are often so busy, Morag's voice comes gently, barely above a whisper, that we miss the subtle symphony of life around us. By learning to listen deeply, we connect not only with our environment, but with our inner selves. They sit in silence for what could be minutes or hours, time seeming to lose its meaning in the peaceful glen. When Aileen finally opens her eyes, she feels a sense of connection to her surroundings that she's never experienced before. As they continue their walk through the glen, Morag encourages Aileen to listen, not just with her ears, but with her whole being. They pause to feel the vibration of the earth beneath their feet, to sense the movement of air against their skin, to inhale the complex tapestry of scents that make up the glen's unique perfume. Listening goes beyond just hearing, Morag explains. As they rest by a small lock, its surface a mirror reflecting the sky above. It's about being fully present, fully aware. When we truly listen, we open ourselves to the wisdom of the world around us. Throughout the day, Morag guides Aileen in various listening exercises. They stand still as statues, eyes closed, turning slowly to track the sound of a buzzard's cry as it echoes across the glen. They lie in a meadow of soft grass, feeling the earth's heartbeat and listening to the whispers of countless blades of grass dancing in the breeze. As the sun begins its descent, painting the sky in hues of pink and gold, Morag and Aileen make their way back to the cottage. The day's lessons have left Aileen feeling both energized and deeply relaxed, more aware of the world around her than she's ever been. Remember, Morag says as they reach the cottage door, the art of listening is not just about the sounds we hear with our ears. It's about being open to the messages that come to us in many forms, through our bodies, through our intuition. When we learn to listen deeply, we tap into a wellspring of wisdom that can guide us through life's challenges. Eileen nods, feeling a profound sense of gratitude for the day's teachings. As she prepares for sleep that night, the gentle symphony of the glen's nighttime sounds drifting through her window. She realizes that she's beginning to hear the quiet voice of her own heart, a voice that had been drowned out by the noise of her busy life for far too long. In the peace of Glencoe, guided by the gentle wisdom of Morag, Eileen is learning not just to listen, but to truly hear the world around her and the wisdom within herself. The following day breaks with a gentle mist rolling through the glen, softening the edges of the world and creating an atmosphere of quiet enchantment. After a peaceful night's sleep, Aileen joins Morag in the cottage's cozy kitchen where the wise woman is already busy at her work table. Today, Morag says with a warm smile, we'll explore the healing power of touch and the wisdom of plants. There's profound medicine in connecting with the natural world through our hands. Morag guides Aileen to the table, which is covered with an array of dried herbs fresh plants, mortars, and pestles, and small glass bottles. 
The air is thick with the mingled scents of the herbs, creating a soothing, almost magical atmosphere. We'll start with something simple, Morag explains, picking up a bunch of fresh lavender. Lavender is wonderful for promoting relaxation and restful sleep. We'll make a soothing balm that you can use whenever you need a moment of calm. Under Morag's patient guidance, Eileen begins to work with the herbs. She starts by gently stripping the lavender flowers from their stems. The repetitive motion and the plant's calming scent already beginning to relax her. Morag shows her how to grind the flowers in a mortar and pestle, releasing their essential oils. Feel the texture of the herbs, Morag encourages. Breathe in their scent. Let your hands connect with the plant's energy. Remember, healing is not just about the final product, but about the process of creation itself. As they work, Morag shares her knowledge about various herbs and their properties. She teaches Eileen how to infuse oils with healing plants, how to blend these oils with beeswax to create balms, and how to bottle and label their creations. Throughout the day, they create several remedies, a calendula salve for skin healing, a comfrey ointment for sore muscles, a blend of chamomile and lemon balm for anxiety relief. With each preparation, Aileen feels more connected to the plants and to the ancient tradition of herbal healing. The healing touch isn't just about the remedies we create, Morag explains as they work. It's about the intention we put into our actions, the care we take in our preparations. When we work with plants, we're connecting with a wisdom that's as old as the earth itself. As the afternoon wears on, Morag teaches Eileen about the importance of self-massage and the power of touch in promoting healing. She shows her how to apply their homemade balms, demonstrating gentle massage techniques for easing tension in the neck and shoulders. Our bodies hold so much wisdom, Morag says softly as she guides Aileen's hands. When we touch with intention and kindness, we open channels for healing energy to flow. Remember to treat yourself with the same gentleness and care you would offer to a dear friend. By the time evening falls, the cottage is filled with the soothing scents of their day's work. Jars of salves and bottles of oils line the shelves, each one a testament to the healing power of nature and the care with which they were created. As they sit by the fire, enjoying a cup of calming chamomile tea. Eileen reflects on the day's lessons. She feels a newfound appreciation for the healing power of touch, both in working with plants and in caring for oneself. The simple act of creating these remedies has left her feeling grounded and connected in a way she hasn't experienced before. Remember, Morag says gently, noticing Eileen's contemplative mood. Healing often comes through simple acts of care and connection. The touch of your hands on herbs, the application of a soothing balm, the gentle massage of tired muscles, these are all ways of showing love and respect for your body and for the natural world. As Aileen prepares for sleep that night, she takes a moment to massage some of the lavender balm into her temples and wrists. The soothing scent and the gentle touch of her own hands bring a sense of peace and comfort. In the quiet of her room, surrounded by the healing energy of the Glen and the wisdom of Morag's teachings, Eileen feels another layer of tension melt away. She drifts off to sleep, 
with a sense of profound gratitude. Her dreams filled with fields of healings of healing herbs and the gentle, nurturing touch of the earth itself. As the days in Glencoe begin to shorten and the evenings grow cooler, Aileen finds herself looking forward to the quiet hours after dinner. It's during these times that Morag often shares stories, tales of old Scotland, legends of the Glen, and wisdom passed down through generations of healers and wise women. On this particular evening, as the wind whistles softly outside and rain patters gently on the thatched roof, Morag and Aileen settle into comfortable chairs by the hearth. The fire crackles merrily, casting a warm, flickering light throughout the cozy room. Morag hands Aileen a steaming mug of spiced herbal tea, its aroma mingling with the scent of wood smoke. Tonight, Morag begins, her voice taking on the rhythmic cadence of a born storyteller. I'll share with you some of the old tales of Glencoe. Eileen leans back in her chair, allowing the warmth of the fire and the soothing sound of Morag's voice to envelop her. As she sips her tea, Morag begins her first tale. The Legend of the Green Lady of Glencoe Long ago, Morag says, her eyes twinkling in the firelight, there lived a young woman in this very glen. She was known for her kindness and her deep connection to the natural world. The people of the glen called her the Green Lady, for she always wore a cloak the color of spring leaves. Morag weaves a tale of how the Green Lady would wander the glen, healing the sick with her knowledge of plants and comforting the troubled with her gentle wisdom. When a harsh winter threatened the people of the glen with famine, it was the Green Lady who showed them which plants were safe to eat, which bark could be used for tea, and how to call upon the strength of the earth to survive. The Green Lady taught the people of Glencoe that true strength comes not from dominating nature, but from living in harmony with it, Morag concludes. Her spirit is said to still wander the glen, guiding those who are lost and offering comfort to those in need. As the evening progresses, Morag shares more stories, tales of mythical creatures that roam the misty mountains, legends of ancient stone circles with healing powers and fables that teach the importance of respecting the natural world. Between stories, Morag and Aileen discuss the deeper meanings behind the tales. They talk about the wisdom embedded in these old legends, lessons about the interconnectedness of all living things, the importance of living in balance with nature, and the power of compassion and community. Stories, Morag explains, adding another log to the fire, are more than just entertainment. They're vessels for passing down wisdom, for teaching important truths in a way that speaks to both the mind and the heart. As the night grows late and the fire burns low, Morag shares one final tale, the story of the wise woman's path. It's a gentler story, one that speaks of the journey of self-discovery, of learning to listen to one's own heart, and of finding purpose in serving others and caring for the earth. As Morag's voice fades into the quiet crackle of the fire, Eileen finds herself filled with a sense of peace and connection. The stories have woven a tapestry of wisdom connecting her to the long history of Glencoe and to the timeless truths that have guided people for generations. 
Remember, dear Aileen, Morag says softly as they prepare to retire for the night. We are all part of a greater story. The choices we make, the way we live our lives, these become the tales that will be told long after we're gone. Eileen nods, feeling the truth of Morag's words resonate deep within her. As she drifts off to sleep that night, her dreams are filled with images from the stories. The Green Lady, walking through misty forests, ancient stone circles humming with energy, and a path winding through the glen, and a path winding through the glen, inviting her forward on her own journey of discovery. In the quiet of the night, as the rain continues, its gentle song on the roof, the wisdom of the old stories settles into Aileen's heart, becoming a part of her own unfolding tale in the magical landscape of Glencoe. As Eileen's time in Glencoe draws to a close, she finds herself waking one morning with a profound sense of change. The soft light of dawn filters through her window, and as she lies in bed, listening to the gentle chorus of birdsong outside, she realizes how different she feels from the weary, stressed woman who arrived at Morag's cottage just a short time ago. Eileen makes her way to the kitchen, where she finds Morag already up, brewing a pot of herbal tea. The wise woman looks up as Aileen enters, a knowing smile on her face. I see a change in you, dear one, Morag says warmly, pouring tea for both of them. Tell me, how do you feel this morning? Eileen takes a moment to consider the question, cradling the warm mug in her hands. I feel lighter, she says finally, more at peace. It's as if I'm seeing everything through new eyes. Morag nods, her eyes twinkling. After breakfast, Morag suggests they take one last walk through the glen. As they step outside, Eileen is struck by the beauty around her. She's seen this view many times over the past days, but somehow, today it seems even more vibrant, more alive. They walk in comfortable silence for a while, Eileen marveling at how in tune she feels with her surroundings. She notices the subtle changes in the breeze, the varied songs of different birds, the intricate patterns of lichen on the rocks, details she might have overlooked before. As they reach a high point overlooking the valley, Morag turns to Eileen. Eileen gazes out over the landscape, taking in the sweeping vistas of mountains, the patchwork of greens and purples in the heather-covered hills, the silver ribbon of the river winding through the glen. But beyond the physical beauty, she senses something more. I see. Connection, Aileen says slowly, putting words to the feelings in her heart. Everything here is part of a greater whole. The plants, the animals, the earth itself. It's all interconnected, and I'm a part of it too. Morag smiles, nodding approvingly. That's a profound truth, Aileen. One that many people in our busy world have forgotten. When we recognize our connection to the natural world, we find our true place in it. As they make their way back to the cottage, Aileen reflects on all she's learned during her stay. The art of listening, not just with her ears, but with her whole being. The wisdom found in old stories and in quiet moments of connection with nature. Back at the cottage, over another cup of tea, Eileen shares her thoughts with Morag. I came here feeling lost, she admits, overwhelmed by the demands of my life in the city. But now, Morag reaches out, 
patting Eileen's hand gently. The wisdom you found here has always been within you, dear one. Glencoe merely provided the space for you to rediscover it. As the day wears on and Aileen begins to pack her things, she feels a mixture of sadness at leaving and excitement for what lies ahead. She knows that returning to her life in Edinburgh will bring challenges, but she feels equipped to face them with a new sense of balance and purpose. Remember, Morag says, as they share a final meal together, the peace you found here doesn't have to stay in Glencoe. You can carry it with you in your heart and in your daily practices, the wisdom of nature the importance of self, care, the power of truly listening. These are gifts you can take with you wherever you go. Eileen nods, feeling the truth of Morag's words. She knows that her time in Glencoe has changed her, has shifted her perspective in ways both subtle and profound. As the evening draws in, Aileen and Morag sit by the fire one last time. The familiar scents of herbs and wood smoke fill the air, and Aileen finds herself committing every detail to memory. You know, Aileen, Morag says softly, true healing isn't about escaping our lives or running away from our problems. It's about finding the strength and wisdom within ourselves to face life's challenges with grace and balance. Eileen considers this, thinking about the life waiting for her back in Edinburgh. I think I understand now, she says slowly. It's not about trying to recreate Glencoe in the city, but about carrying the essence of what I've learned here into my daily life. Morag smiles her eyes twinkling in the firelight. Exactly, dear one. The peace you found here isn't dependent on this place. It's a part of you now, a wellspring you can draw from wherever you are. They talk late into the night, Morag offering final pieces of advice, and Aileen sharing her plans for incorporating her new wisdom into her life back home. As Aileen finally retires to her room, she feels a profound sense of gratitude for her time in Glen Coe and for Morag's gentle guidance. Lying in bed, listening to the familiar nighttime sounds of the Glen, Aileen reflects on her journey. She arrived feeling broken and lost, but now she feels whole, centered, and ready to face whatever lies ahead. With this new perspective, she drifts off into a peaceful sleep, her dreams filled with images of misty mountains, healing herbs, and the wise, kind eyes of Morag. The morning of Aileen's departure dawns clear and bright, as if Glencoe itself is bidding her a fond farewell. As she steps out of the cottage with her bag packed, Aileen takes a deep breath, filling her lungs with the crisp highland air one last time. Morag stands in the doorway, a serene smile on her face. Remember, dear Aileen, she says softly, you carry the spirit of Glencoe with you now. It's a part of your story, just as you are now a part of its story. Eileen nods, feeling a lump in her throat. Thank you, Morag, she says, her voice filled with emotion. For everything. Morag steps forward, enveloping Aileen in a warm embrace. You don't need to express it in words, she says gently. Express it in how you live your life. That's the greatest thanks you can give. As they part, Morag presses a small package into Aileen's hands. A few reminders of your time here, she explains. Some herbs from the garden, a jar of healing balm we made together, 
and a little book of the stories we've shared. Let them be touchstones when you need to reconnect with the wisdom you found here. Eileen clutches the package to her chest, feeling its warmth seep into her heart. With a final goodbye, she turns and begins her journey down the path that will take her back to her old life, though she knows she returns as a new person. As Eileen walks, she reflects on her time in Glencoe. She thinks of the lessons she's learned, the importance of listening deeply, not just to others, but to herself and to the natural world. She remembers the healing power of gentle, self-care, and connection with nature. She carries with her the wisdom of the old stories, reminding her of her place in the grand tapestry of life. Though her heart feels heavy at leaving, Aileen also feels a sense of excitement for what lies ahead. She knows that integrating her new wisdom into her daily life will be a challenge, but it's one she feels ready to face. As the path curves, Aileen pauses for one last look back. She sees Morag still standing in the doorway of the cottage, a timeless figure against the backdrop of the misty mountains. The wise woman raises her hand in farewell, and Aileen feels a wave of peace wash over her. In that moment, Eileen understands that while her time in Glencoe has come to an end, her journey is far from over. The wisdom she's gained here is not meant to be hoarded, but shared. Just as Morag has passed her knowledge on to Eileen, so too will Aileen find ways to share what she's learned with others. As Eileen turns once more to the path ahead, she makes a silent promise to herself, to Morag, and to the spirit of Glencoe to be a source of calm in the chaos of city life, to help others find their own connection to the healing power of nature, to listen deeply, care gently, and live in harmony with the world around her. The path ahead winds through the glen, eventually leading back to the wider world beyond. But Aileen knows now that no matter where her life takes her, a part of her will always belong to this magical valley. The lessons of Glencoe and the wisdom of its wise woman have become a part of her, a wellspring of strength and peace she can draw upon whenever she needs it. And so, with a heart full of gratitude, and a spirit renewed, Eileen steps forward into the next chapter of her life. She carries with her the legacy of Glencoe, a legacy of wisdom, healing, and profound connection to the natural world. It's a legacy she will nurture and share, ensuring that the gentle magic of the Glen and the timeless wisdom of its wise woman will continue to touch lives far beyond the misty mountains of the highlands. As Aileen disappears around a bend in the path, Morag turns back to her cottage, a soft smile playing on her lips. She knows that Aileen's story is just one of many that have unfolded in this ancient glen, and as surely as the seasons turn, there will be others who find their way here, seeking healing, wisdom, and a reconnection with the natural world. The wise woman of Glencoe returns to her garden, ready to tend her herbs and prepare for whoever might next come, walking down the misty path in need of the timeless peace and healing that can be found in this magical corner of the Highlands. Thank you for allowing Fireside Fables to be a part of your journey tonight. We hope our story has gently guided you to the gates of Dreamland, wrapping you in the comfort of tales told by the Fireside's warm glow. 
For those of you who might still be seeking the embrace of sleep, stay with us a little longer. A calm, meditative peace will follow shortly, designed to ease you into a restful slumber under the watchful care of the night's peaceful embrace. Remember, the path to dreamland is always here, lit by the soft light of our fireside tales. May you find tranquility, peace, and the sweetest of dreams. Until next time, good night, and let the gentle rhythm of the night cradle you to sleep. Close your eyes and settle into a comfortable position. Whether you're lying down or seated, allow your body to relax completely. Take a deep breath in, filling your lungs with air, and then gently exhale, releasing all the tension from your body. This meditation will guide you into a deep, restful sleep. As you follow along, let my words be the gentle waves that guide you into the peaceful embrace of slumber. Begin by focusing on your breath. Feel the natural rhythm of your inhale and exhale. With every breath, Imagine a wave of relaxation sweeping over your body. Starting from the top of your head, let this wave of calm flow down to your toes, relaxing each part of your body one by one. Now, bring your attention to your mind. Visualize your thoughts like leaves floating on a gentle stream, drifting further away with each breath. There's nothing for you to do right now. Know where you need to be, except right here, in this moment of peace. As your body sinks deeper into relaxation, imagine a soft, warm light enveloping you. This light brings with it a deep sense of calm, filling every corner of your being. With each breath, this light grows brighter, your body feeling lighter. It's now time to let go completely. Your serene place is here to cradle you into deep sleep. With every breath, feel yourself drifting further into this haven of peace. You are safe, you are loved, and you are embraced by the gentle arms of sleep. As my voice fades away, let the calmness and peace you feel guide you into a deep, restful sleep. Your body knows what it needs and it's time to surrender to the soothing rhythm of your breath, to the quiet of your mind, and to the warmth of your peaceful place. Release all hold on consciousness and allow yourself to sink into the depths of sleep. Here, in this space, healing and rejuvenation happen effortlessly. Let go and let sleep envelop you in its comforting embrace.